Bristol Community College Bayhawks versus University of Connecticut at Avery Point. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're back for another great Bayhawk season. It's Cardoza and the Portuguese Cowboy, Craig Salvador, back in action again. The last time we left you, eight months ago, last March, the Bayhawks lost in the New England Region 21 semifinals versus Mass Bay Community College in heartbreaking fashion. The last several years, the Bristol Community College men's team has struggled to get over the proverbial hump. But that was then. And this is now, and this is a whole new Bayhawks team and a whole new beginning. Led by ninth year head coach Rob Del Lu, the Bayhawks come into this season ranked third in Region 21. And their sights and their goals are set on New York for their first trip to the national tournament with a chance to showcase to the country what Fall River's finest has to offer. How's it going, Craig? It's ready been... for another exciting season? Oh yeah, all hyped already, getting ready for this first game of the men's basketball season. It's been too long, Dave, and we are getting ready for game time. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to tonight's home opener of the NJCAA Region 21 contest with the visiting UConn Avery Point Pointers and your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. The NJCAA. Region 21 and Bristol Community College are committed to the ideals of good sportsmanship, safety, and fair play. We ask all fans, coaches, and players to show respect for the opposing team, game officials, and each other before, during, and after today's game. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. And now for tonight's starting lineup, first of the visiting UConn at Avery Point Pointers. At guard, our freshman, number four, Steven. Fletcher. At guard, number 12, Jason Hamlin. At guard, a sophomore, number 14, Greg Cooper. At forward, a sophomore, number 15, Tyrell Martinez. And number 22, Nick. Fierce. And now for your Bristol Community College Bayhawks. As forward, a freshman from Lake Charles, Louisiana, number four, Joshua Wimbush. At guard from Providence, Rhode Island, number 10, Zachary Viega. At guard, number 30, a freshman from Providence, Rhode Island, number Marcus Mitchell. At forward, a sophomore, number one from Providence, Rhode Island, Juan Espino. And at guard, a sophomore, number 13 from McCristian, Massachusetts, the Pope, Wendy Pope. BCC is coached by Rob Delu. Assisted by Frank Stevenson, Joshua Rogers, and Ryan Fernandez. And now, if you would all please rise for tonight's rendition of our national anthem by our own Miss Lucy Cabral.
when these two teams get together, Craig, they've had some they've had some battles, and um, it looks to be a great season. We got some new players, and right now jumping for for BCC is number four, Joshua Winbush. Joshua Winbush is six foot seven, Craig. We haven't seen height like this in a while. And uh, Joshua Winbush comes from Barbie High School in Lake Charles, Louisiana. So Coach Rob Del Lou getting out of uh, getting out of good old New England to go recruit some players. And here we go. The season opener is underway here at Fall River, Massachusetts, home of the Braga Bridge, home of Battleship Cove. Espinal threw, threw the ball to the glass there. I don't know what was going on. Lost control of it. And here comes UConn. Not yep. to be confused with the Huskies. Nope, these are the pointers. <laughs> University of Connecticut, Avery Point. That three-pointer miss. Rebound and grab by Winbush. Pushed ahead to Espinal. Uh, they're saying it was off Espinal. Espinal, one of the returning players from last year's um, Bayhawks team. And if you remember, Dave, he was actually a late pickup last season. Yeah, he came in halfway through the season and was like, look, who's this guy? Yeah, but he started putting up points and really established himself, and he's in the starting lineup tonight. Yes, he is from Providence, Rhode Island. BCC picking up man. Driving to his left, putting up, putting up, up softly and in. That was number 12. J.C. Hamlin. Bringing it up over the timeline as the Bayhawks. Here's Pope. Winbush coming up to the top of the key, and they're going to call steps. Now, I remember last year, now you can probably remember too, Dave, was that was the big call pretty much through the entire season was travels on the Bayhawks. Yeah, you had a lot of those last year, didn't you? Didn't we? Picking up, picking up man to man, full court man to man. Yep. I talked to Coach Rob Del Lou earlier this week, and he said, yeah, we're going to, same thing, run, pressure, pressure the basketball, get out on the fast break. UConn in their half court set, and they're up to a 4 0 lead. Number four yep. in the lane with a floater, Stephen Fletcher. Yep, good movement getting into the paint, able to just put in the easy two is Fletcher. Yeah, Fletcher a little bit on the smaller side, but he was able to float that in. Baseline jumper, Pope, no good. Ball goes out of bounds, and it's going to be blue basketball as the referee calls it there. BCC looking to play aggressive defense. And that's usually what they do. They get, they get inside your jersey, that's for sure. And right now, Coach Rob Del Lue choosing to play man-to-man, -man, full court man-to-man. -man. UConn, their half-court set. Little motion offense. BCC does have a deeper bench than UConn, so we'll see if that plays a factor later in the game. Three-pointer no good by Fletcher, rebounded by Winbush, pushing up court, it's Quincy Pope. Oh, nice pass cross court. Yeah, nice cross court pass, but couldn't get an open look. That's Pinot for three. Got it. And that's the guy that we've seen in, in warm-ups, Greg, with those lavender shoes. I know you like to call them purple. Looks like a lavender to me. <laughs> Don't be such an interior decorator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. My side, my side gig. <laughs> he can design your house and call a basketball game. He does it all. Dave Cardoza. <laughs> Oh, the beautiful smell of lavender. <laughs> and there's going to be a foul on the foul on the dribble there. And they're going to call that a number 10, Zachary Viega. <laughs> and yes, Coach Rob Del Lou in his ninth season if I'm not mistaken. In his ninth season, Bayhawks won their home, their season opener on Tuesday against Massasoya in an 11-point win. It was 65-54. to 54. So the Bayhawks coming out 1-0, looking to make it 2-0. But we're, it's too early for that right now. 16-40 left to play here, here in the early going. B BCC had a very good season last year. Unfortunately, took an early exit in the playoffs. Looking to change that this year, going on a deep playoff run. Season's early, so we'll see what it has to come. And talking to Coach D. Craig, 
you know, he's got a lot of new, he's got a lot of new players. And there's a steal. Steal by BCC. Here they come. And losing it back the other way. Yep, lost it as quick as they got it. Two on one. Nice pass. And I think it might have been an offensive foul. I don't know. Don't think it's an offensive foul. I'm not sure what the call is there. I'm not sure if the ref knows. Well, that's what they're discussing now. I don't know. And they're just going with it. Bayhawks in their off-court set. Wimbush coming up. That's Pinal. He likes that three-pointer. There's a three, and it's good. Now Malcolm Mi Mar Marcus Mitchell. Marcus Mitchell. I almost said Malcolm Mitchell. Got the Patriots on oh, the brain. Need Malcolm Mitchell back. If you're a Patriots fan. Need him off the PUP. Six four. Now six. Ooh. Oh, missing jump the layup. Number twenty-two. Nick Fierce. You jumped the gun on that one, Dave. But hey, it looks like. It. It looks like an easy shot, but couldn't get it. Driving into the lane, Pope loses it. Coming up with a J.C. Hamlin. Up, up, and away to the basket. And there's going to be a foul. And it looks like it's going to be on. It's on number 30, Marcus Mitchell. As Nick Fierce looking for redemption after the missed layup attempt draws the foul, so he'll be shooting two. 6-4 in the early going. Fierce drains that. Coming into the game, number 35. Coming in for Gray Cooper. Number 35, Elijah Mabouf Boyd. Try saying that three times fast. Coming off. Deep three, NBA range, he makes it. I love the confidence from Mitchell with that, making it look so easy. That's the second three-pointer. That ball's going to go sailing, and the Bayhawks are going to get the basketball back. Off that three-pointer from Marcus Mitchell, he had ice water in his veins. You saw just how calm he was on the three-point shot. Ice water. Wimbush playing pass with Mitchell. Quincy Pope pulls up for three, trains it. Now is, the Pope. It, now is this the BCC Bayhawks or the Golden State Warriors? They're just hitting threes after threes after threes. They've only made threes in this game. That is all their points. Four threes, <laughs> not even five minutes into this game. You see Pope there just pulls up with the three with confidence, drains it, hand down, man down. Very confident in their three-point <laughs> shots early on in this game, and it's been working for him. 12 to 5 early on, BCC. BCC coming up kind of sluggish on the offensive end. If, if you've seen, if, uh, if you're just joining us, the, um, the pointers, UCAP, came out with a 4 nothing lead. Since then, BCC on a 12 to 1 run here in the last couple minutes. A lot of time left here in the first half. And early on, I think the guy to talk about is going to be Marcus Mitchell in this. He's got two assists and two threes already in this game. So I think when it comes down to it, he's going to be the guy to look out for in this game. The thing is, who has the uglier sneakers? Is it Zachary Viega or is it Juan Espinal? Oh, don't I'm going to go with Viega right now. Don't be dissing the lavender. Well, Espinal has the lavender. And who are you arguing has uglier shoes? Viega. Number 10, Zachary Viega. Got that little splash of, yeah, he's got too much it's like a, like a bright salmon. Yeah, he's got too much stuff going on there. I don't like it. And you got to stand out. We, we, we got Keanu Reeves over here, reference. <laughs> Is that what he does in his spare time? <laughs> Dumping it in. Dumping it in on Viega. Three-pointer fierce on the wing, way off. Yeah, no one can come up with the rebound, though. 
That ball didn't hit rim. That shot clock's going to keep going. 15 on the shot clock. BCC. I think they might be saying a foul away from the ball. I was going to say. Yeah, it looks like there is a foul away from the ball. BCC forces you to go deep into that shot clock. We've seen it many times last year. We've seen it many times in the past. In the past. You know, BCC plays that tight man-to-man -man defense and forces teams to do foolish things. And that's going to be uh, Greg Cooper coming in for Nick Fierce. Number 14, Greg Cooper checking into the game with a ponytail. Looking like Bill Belichick's son. <laughs> Number 24 for the B, uh, BCC checks into the game for Juana Spinal. It is Haken Coben. So Coben taking over Espinal in the game so far. Loose ball. Yeah, Pope almost had a block on it. UConn holding on to that basketball. They're really taking their they're time. To, and they're trying to figure out that defense. They're, and they're going to call a foul. That's going to be on Marcus Mitchell. Fouled him on the three-point attempt. And Coach, uh, Coach Del Lou not liking that. I think he's going to be coming out right now. Damian Martin coming in. Freshman point guard. And the great story about this, Damian Martin, Craig, him and Josh Winbush were teammates last year at Barb High School in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Joshua Winbush, of course, the new freshman, six foot seven. Six foot seven center. Damian Martin coming in. He'll come in for number 30. Marcus Mitchell, who had two big three pointers. And UConn starting to cut back into starting to cut into that lead. Makes all three free, uh, makes. Yeah. Anyway. Nice uh, piece of free throw shooter by Stephen Fletcher. Cutting this lead to, cutting this lead to five. Wimbush throws it inside. Puts it about the glass and in is number 24. Hakan Ada Koban. Hakan Ada Koban. 14 and nine. That's been a while. UConn just score. Yep, Boyd laid it in for two. Boyd coming off the bench. Oh, trying to jam it. Winbush coming up short. Kicking it around, kicks it back out. Three-point shot. Pope couldn't get it to go. Fourteen to nine, thirteen forty-nine left to play. BCC picking up man all over the court right now. Yep. Looking to get a Pope. stop. Looking to get a stop. Try to get some more points. Yes, sir. We get a little bit of a crowd. Yeah. We get a little bit of a capacity crowd here for the season opener. Yeah, good turnout. For the home, so far. season home opener for BCC. Good defense by BCC at the shot clock is no good. Rebounded by Martin. Martin swings it to Pope. They'll get it inside to Winbush. I don't know why they don't pound it inside to Winbush more often. The guy's six foot seven, a little bit on the lighter end, but still he's got that he got that length hey, and that athleticism. He needs to establish himself on the block there. Yeah, Winbush is towering over everyone right now in this game. He is definitely definite height advantage. We haven't seen BCC have too many height advantages. Remember recent years, and remember last year, they were on the shorter side when it came to teams. Yeah, that's for sure. Pulling it from three-point land, and rolls oh. around, no good. Couldn't get it to fall was Viega. Driving to the basket and losing it out of bounds. Not sure if he thought there was a man there or not, but it's going to be BCC basketball. Now, we have to keep up with the, um, with the substitutions for BCC because we know Coach Rob Del Lue likes to go deep into that bench, and he has a deep team. Talked to Coach Rob Del Lu earlier in the week, and he says that they're deep. They have a lot of guys that are interchangeable and a lot of guys that can, that can that can play. So we'll see. 
Yeah, like I said at the beginning of this game, that might play the factor in is that BCC has a much more depth in their uh, bench. Losing the, losing the basketball there. There's BCC coming back the other way, putting them up the glass. Nice move on the inside there. That's number 35. Mabouf Boyd. Yeah, it's Damian Marble looking to drive. A nice pass lay-in for two. Number, yes. Number 10, Zachary Viega from East Providence. BCC with a lot of guys from Providence. Oh, nice change of direction. Puts it about the glass and in. Nifty little move. Looking like Kyrie Irving over there. J.C. Hamlin going one way, then going the other way. He's Crossed him up. Oh, nice drop down pass. Nice. And that's good patience right there from the Winbush. The big man to the big man. Yep. <laughs> And as I was saying, that was good patience by Winbush waiting to dodge the opponent, able to put it in for two. Excellent move. Oh, that ball stolen by Martin. Losing it back, though. Fierce looking to drive. Winbush was right there, though. He's just trying to find something, anything. UConn doing a lot of fumbling around with the basketball. 13 left on the shot clock. BCC playing that textbook defense. Three-point shot from the wing, no good. Winbush, tough rebound. It helps to be 6-7. BCC, like I said, they got some big guys. Akan Adekoban. It's from Istanbul, Turkey. Cross court, Viega takes a jumper. Short jumper, no good. UCAP with the rebound, looking to push. Fierce. Uh, Fierce just had no one to pass to. Yeah, he thought twice about it. In the corner, three-pointer, no good. Rebounded by Hakan. On the wing, Viega getting out in the break. And they're going to call a foul. Getting back there to Nate was too late was number 22, Nick Fierce. And then Viega's going to go to the line for the first time in this game. That is the only the first foul for UCAP in this game. And you see the same thing for the women's team. If you recall, the women's team didn't have too many team fouls. And they still blew our girls out by 20-something points. And Viega sinks the free throw, and he's going to be replaced for the time being by Steven Torres, 5'11", another freshman from New Bedford High School. Going down the other end. I think he stepped out. Yeah, he stepped out on that drive. Number 15, Tyrell Martinez. Triple drives and stepped out of bounds. BCC with the basketball. In the corner for three. No good. Yeah, UConn with the rebound. Coming up. Fierce in the open court. Puts it up. Can't get it to fall. He's been having trouble in there with his layups. Yeah, he has. And Lucky Martinez picks up the scraps. Oh, going back the other way. So fast. Goodness gracious. Back on the other end, scoring to Steven Torres, the New Bedford freshman. I tell you what, I was talking with Lucy a little bit earlier during the break, and the men's game is just so, so much quicker. It just, it just is. Yep, so fast. Get used to it. So fast pace, and we're seeing that right now with Torres. BCC usually has a lot of guys like that, guys that can fly down the court, get in the open, get in the open court, and just fly. Yeah, BCC, a very athletic team. Yes, Haban looking up, another Torres to the hoop, keeps it going, gets it to roll in. And I'm liking this connection. Nice body control. And I'm liking this connection from Haban, from Caban and Torres right there. 
I think I've been calling Hakan everything but his name. Hab Haban, Hakan, Haban, Hakan. I'll get it right. <laughs> oh, wide open. Rebounded by Espinol off the miss. New shot clock for BCC. He'll have another shot at it. Misses again. Fierce. And Martinez, they're going to call him for steps. Seen that coming the whole way. And you look up, Craig, and it's 24 to 17. 824 left to play. It's been a fast-paced game. Not too many fouls, only 14 fouls for, for BCC, only one um, for the visiting UCAP. Yeah, pretty clean game to start things off. BCC doing a good job of breaking their press, of breaking their traps. And that they are, we saw in the girls' game, that was the problem with the girls. Three-pointer, yeah. Most definitely a miss. Missed by Provitt on the other end. Provitt with the basketball, looks up. BCC with the numbers, taking it all the way to the hole. Strong take by Steven Torres. It's just so quick, bubbling like a bee. Yep, good movement right there. Taking it through your whole family. Good movement there. Corey Green with the steal, just giving it off. Easy two-pointer for Torres. Getting a lot of easy hoops. Yeah, Torres is, might be another guy to look out for by the end of this game. I smell food. I do too. I'm getting hungry. <laughs> Wow, do I smell food. Hmm. BCC again, taking UCAP to task with their defense, taking it to the hole at the buzzer, it's good! And I think they, they did they count the basket? Not sure. They did. They count that basket because it was 26 to 17, now 26 to 19. Who do we have that on the score? Well, they're discussing it now. And we have a timeout on the floor. You're at Bishop Conley High School. You're watching Bayhawks basketball here on FR Media. And we'll be joining you all year for um, to broadcast these Bristol Community College men and women's home games again. So check your local listings. And we'll keep it here with a timeout in the action. <laughs> All right, BCC coming out of the timeout with Quincy Pope. Return star from last year, Coach Rob Del Luce said he expects a lot of leadership from his team this year. I mean, for, for from Quincy Pope this season. Now, right out of the timeout, BCC hot out of the gates. I like the way BCC's moving the ball. Wimbush kicks it back out. Three-point shot. It's good. Nailed it. Yep, Corey Green deep for three. And we, we're seeing a lot of guys on this team who can shoot threes. Yeah. And we've seen that in the past, too. Just a different bunch here. And, yes, Corey Green, I couldn't get the words out fast enough. Number one five. I'm telling you, Coach Rob Del Lue, he's merciless with his substitution. He's got guys moving in and out of there. Fresh bodies. Here's Corey Green again. To a cutting. To a cutting Caleb Provitt. And you look at all the guys that are over six feet. Besides Luis Rosario Rivera, ret a returning sophomore, and, uh, and Steven Torres, who's almost six feet, everybody else is six feet. Besides Damian Martin. Who's the only undersized, who's the only guy that's, you know, under 5'10". Yeah, but I've been impressed with him early on. He's been doing good with a little bit of time he's been playing. 
Kicking it back out. Here's Corey Green for three. Bounces up and in. And in the trifecta. Took a while, but it comes down and yes, it counts it all the same. And when you're hot, you're hot. 32 to 19. Yep, give that man the basketball. Yeah. He's heating up. That, Bay that Bayhawks defense is swarming. It's swarming right now. 14 on the shot clock. You can see the focus in the Bayhawks' eyes on defense. It's definitely there. It's definitely alive. Went on the shot clock again. They won't get it off this time. And BCC, they are, not, they are not giving UCAP any leeway. Their defense has been dynamite, only holding UCAP to 19 points here in the first half. And that is what you call pressure. Ooh, that ball stolen away. Wimbush telegraphed that one. Give it to the other number four. Oh, what a block, but he makes up for it. Going back the other end. Mr. Viega taking it to the middle, drops it in, drops the dime in. 34 to 19. That BCC really making up for their mistake right there. They definitely did. Wimbush with a block. And that's an interior presence that Coach Rob Delu hasn't had since I've been watching Bayhawks basketball, calling Bayhawks basketball. In the lane, that miss by Stephen Fletcher missed that one. Oh, look at Green in the corner. Green, open, drains it. Shaking his head like MJ. Got the fro going and glowing. Like I said, give that man the basketball. As I said it before, right now he has ice water in his veins. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, 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 They give the ball to Corey Green in the corner. That man's got stones. Drops it in for another three-pointer. Yep, he has nine points on the game, all of them threes. Oh, that's Perfect. right. Perfect. Mama, here comes that man. Perfect three for three on the day. <laughs> 37 to 19 in the Bayhawks. You know, these two were, it was kind of a, tight game early on. It was just kind of like, where's this thing going? Kind of seesaw, and then all of a sudden the Bayhawks have just exploded here in, in the last few minutes to take an 18 point lead. And hopefully for their sake and Coach Rob Del Lue, they can they can keep it going and, and put the pedal to the metal. And they have not let up with their defense. And I like what I'm seeing because I think last year, Craig, I think you, you know, we sat here and said, well, why aren't they pressing? I mean, this is, this is the kind of team that they are. Like, why aren't they, you know, putting that pressure defense? Why are they sitting back in zone? And today it's just been like 100% tenacity from the, opening, from the opening tip. And again, very aggressive defense is what we like to see. Quincy Pope on him hard. There it is. And Quincy Pope's going to come up with the steal. Seen that coming. Loses control of it. Puts it about the glass. That should count. Guess they're not going to give him a continuation on that one, but. Nope. Great job for him to stay with it and uh, keep, his, keep his body control and put it off the glass, but they won't count it. Nope. And what you might not have seen was Caleb Provitt from behind gave that ball a little tap, able to get away so Quincy Pope could get the steal. Yeah. Corey Green, boom! That's a bad man! He just won't miss. <laughs> he just won't miss. Corey Green is unconscious here in Fall River. Oh, big steal. There it is, Hakan. Hakan Ada Koban. And a great story here, Craig, and I was talking to Coach Dale Lou, and I'm like, where the heck, where did you find this guy? They find these guys on these websites. I did not know that. There's different websites they find. They find one thing about the internet, and it's just blown up. You could find any great basketball player, any great football player. If there's talent out there anywhere in the world, you could find it. This guy coming from Bodwell High School in Istanbul, Turkey. Six foot six. He's listed here as a forward slash center, but is he playing like a forward slash center? Hmm. He's doing it all out there on the court. 
And out he is. Got a great find. 41-19, BCC leads. Fle he can't get anywhere. They can't, they can't do anything. Three-point shot, Fletcher, no good. Oh, Quincy Pope with keep, the rebound. Yes, way to keep it alive, Pope. Pope takes it from one end to the other, puts it about the left end, and the oh. jam! Win, Bush, and there's a party going on in the river. And Joshua Winbush taking it to Slamtown. I feel like Jay-Z right now, I'm feeling it. Loose ball. That took forever for Coming anyone. Coming up, laying it in with ease is Caleb Provit. That one took forever for anybody to pick up. It was just sitting there. Caleb Provit just scoops it up and just takes it to the basket like, like nothing. Nobody around him. Caleb Provit from George Washington Carver High School, but in Montgomery, Alabama. And three minutes left in the half, 45 to 19, Dave. Oh, they're on a hell of a run. <laughs> Damian Martin checking back in the game. Damian Martin coming in for Caleb Provit. And 45 to 19, and this team right now, they're engaged. The bench is engaged, and that's something that we've seen in the past. The bench engaged. The bench is louder than the crowd. This BCC team, their defense has been terrific. They've been tormenting the pointers. And this is the culture that Coach Rob Dell Lewis set. It's early on in the season, but they'd like to see them get over the hump. Pulling up. Green for three. Uh, Finally misses. I guess he couldn't stay perfect forever. Had the look, though. That's the thing. They're getting great looks from outside. Martinez cleans it up off the glass. Yukon yeah, finally gets an offensive board and puts it up off the glass and in. Yeah, that one stayed up forever. Oh, nice find by Bush. Getting it to Hakan. Koban. And he traveled. I thought he might have gotten fouled on the play. I think Coach Delu thought that he might have got fouled there. But those two right there, what, what, what about that? Those twin towers there playing outside, inside basketball. You got Wimbush coming up to the top of the key and, and finding Coban there. These guys are six foot six, six foot seven, lengthy. Yeah, it's been paying off for them. We've been seeing with rebounds and blocks from Wimbush. Kicking it back out, and they're going to call travel. I think that's the second time he's traveled there. Yeah, just jumping the gun, picking up his feet too quick. Yep, Tyrell Martinez. One fifty-eight left to play here. Someone interested to see this UCAP team is made up of mostly sophomores, a lot of returning players. And BCC. They're just lighting them up. Yeah, BCC with a lot of you, a lot of young freshmen. In the corner, cross-court pass for Pope. The three-pointer is good. Damian Martin. I'm sorry, Steven Torres. Oh, I'm sorry, Damian Martin. That was right the first time. Yep, don't <laughs> question yourself, Dave, because Damian Martin <laughs> is the one with the three-point stroke on that play. And another turnover. So, again, Bayhawks ball. Either way, it was a great look, Craig, from Quincy Pope, finding, finding his man across court in the corner, and Damian Martin drains the three. And it's 48-21. to 21. Oh, Bush taking it in, laying it in easy. And BCC reaches the half century mark and still playing that pressure, full court, man to man defense right now is Quincy Pope. Ooh. Well, he does break away. Does break away and win push with the, with the block. And like I said, BCC has that. They have that defensive presence. They have that rim protector, if you will. That's great to see what you can do when you're 6'7". I love height. 
They're going to call a foul on Martin there. This is the sixth team foul in the half for the Bayhawks. Well, that's going to be number seven. That's going to be number seven, Craig. So they are in the bonus. Be a one and one opportunity that wasn't in the act of shooting. But they are in the bonus. First shot is drained by number four. Number four, Stephen Flesh Fletcher, freshman guard. And like you said, Craig, these, this um, BC I and mean, this um, UConn team is full of a lot of sophomores, a lot of returning players. And um, they're getting whooped on. And you BCC has BCC has four sophomore players. Going baseline was Pope. Ends up in Martin's hands. Oh, a nice find. Oh, he finds Pope for three. <laughs> the Pope. If you want to put it in perspective how their three-pointer shots are going, they have 27 points on threes alone. Looking up, Mr. Green. Oh, he wanted that jam, but he'll just lay it in. They had a few extra inches maybe, but hey, it all counts the same. I think he just missed time to jump. I think he had that. Fifteen on the shot clock, four second difference between that and the game clock. Fierce will lay it in. But PCC has a 30 point lead, the hold for the final shot. It would have been a whirlwind of a first half. It's been all BCC here. Oh, they're Windbush. Not, I don't think they're going to hold. Barney Hakan, Koban. BCC going to call a timeout. They got .8. On the shot clock, and Rob Del Lue's going to go to his uh, play, play drawing skills. Going to try to show off. We have a lot in the crowd here. This is one of the biggest crowds I've seen here. A big turnout yes. for the home opener here, and it's been an exciting game, so definitely paying off to come here. Well, exciting for BCC. Well, isn't <laughs> it's that who exciting in general? <laughs> it's 55 to 25. Well, isn't this who the crowd's here to see? Yeah. Hmm. No, it definitely has been a great. Great first half for BCC. Started off kind of, kind of sluggish, I thought, offensively, but defensively they've been tormenting, and in in the shorts, almost literally of UConn at Avery Point, and the offense has been tremendous. What is the um, what is the, how many makes from three point land do they have? Do they have. Oh my goodness, the three! Oh, that was a good play drawn up. And Quincy Pope had a chance to, I don't even think he needed to catch that and shoot it. I mean, he, he had a chance to catch that and shoot it. Point eight is a, is a catch and shoot. But nonetheless, a great effort there, a great effort by BCC. 55 to 25, BCC with a 30 point lead and a terrific half. So uh, thank you all for joining us for a great first half. We'll look to continue it here in the second half. BCC up 55 to 25 up on University of Connecticut at Avery Point. We'll be back right after this on FR Media. Or it's 55 to 25, your Bristol Community College Bayhawks with a 30 point lead here in the home opener. Basketball season is here again. And uh, BCC up by 30, the third ranked team in Region 21. BCC comes in today. Looking for their second win of the young season. It's uh, Cardoza. It sounds like a little, if I'm a little out of breath, I am. Ran back here up the, up the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> See Did the guy in the bathroom, we said it was hot in here. No, this guy was like pouring sweat off of him. He's very invested in the like game. He needed a bucket. Very invested in the game. It's, yeah. an, it's a nail biter. Yes, yeah, a nail biter. So at the free throw line, you can hear a pin drop in here right now. Sinks and sink in the first one is number 15, Terrell Martinez, sophomore forward. UConn men's team, UConn at every point men's team. 
just to correct that. Rebound by the Pokes. Second free throw missed by Martinez. UConn's also want to know. Swinging the ball around the perimeter. Good UConn defense swarming around right now. Good passing from BCC. He's got Quincy Pope wide open. UConn playing zone, playing 2-3 zone. Deep three, Pope drains it. Oh, nothing but net by QP. Quincy Pope, 58-26. BCC deadly with the three-point stroke. Shooting over 50%, Greg. You said they were 9 for 18 in the first half. That's make it 10 for 19, and they're over 50% for the game. I know Corey Green had like four of them stolen. Going back the other way, bounce pass. Going back the other way, UConn. As BCC turns the ball over. Marcus Mitchell needed to put a little bit more sauce in that, on that bounce pass there. Couldn't get it through the crowd. Turned the ball over for BCC. And now UConn will take the ball out and eat their own basket. Ooh, a nice block by Espinol. Blocking Bill Belichick's son. alley -oop. Oh, this ball tipped up like it's a volleyball game. Yeah. Martinez loses the basketball. What a quick sequence there. 18-33 left to play. We're here early on in the second half. Driving to the basket. Losing is Martinez. Winbush altered that shot. Going back the other way. Vieira on the wing. Takes it to the basket. Loses it. UConn. 2-1-2 two two here. Up. Reverse lay-in. No good. Winbush with the rebound. With the ball. The rebound. I'll tell you, the Bayhawks been playing stellar, stellar defense. That's for sure. And now just being patient. Oh, Pope had that shot all yeah, day. He did, definitely did. You probably would have pulled that before. BCC doesn't need to be so frantic on offense. Nice Taking pass it back. back out. Mid range jumper. Vieira, no good. Ooh, rebound by Pope. Dropped it into Winbush. Pope with a sneaky rebound there. Oh, Pope Quincy wants that Pope one. for three. Giants it. Boy, it is a three-point barrage here for the Bayhawks. Pope nails it from the wing. Foul on Espinal. Foul on Espinal, fouling Gray Cooper, number 14. And that's one Espinel's fourth foul. Didn't realize that, but he's in foul trouble. But coming in for him is Corey Green, who had a hell of a first half. Yep, 14. He'll jump it in to Martinez. And I was going to say 14 points so far on the ledger for Corey Green. He's got four threes on the game. BCC are being really calm. 1 2 2. 1 2 2, two defense being played by UCAP. A lot of simple cross court passing. That's how you break that 2 2. That's how you break that defense right there. Quincy Pope flashing to the top. Puts it up off the glass and in. BCC almost has all of their point total that they did in the first game against Massasoit. And Nick Fierce going in, dropping a, dropping a floater in for two. Well, I don't know who that was, who Marcus Mitchell was throwing the ball there to. Another turnover by Marcus Mitchell. 
Yeah, just jumped the gun and threw it straight to one of the one of UCAP's players. Driving. Mitchell puts it up off the glass. A reverse lay-in with I his left hand is good. It looked like he might have traveled, but they're not going to say it. Winbush going to the basket. And they're going to call a blocking foul. Winbush going right at Martinez. Guess Martinez got there a little bit too late. And they're going to call on Martinez, and he doesn't like it. But yeah, but when you're Winbush, that is how you use your body as a weapon. Yeah, that's for sure. I give it to Martinez, though, for taking it from that big man. No lack of hustle there. Winbush misses, misses the chance for the three-point play. Three-point shot is good. J.C. Hamlin for three. Got some good three-point shooters on the court, that's for sure. BC still up by 32. And Green taking Hamlin. his time. Ooh, driving to the hole, dumping it in to the big man. Losing it, though, to Nick Fierce. Up ahead, Martinez going to the rim. Too powerful. The, the putback, though, is Nick Fierce following up the play. Yeah, good job by Nick Fierce staying with the ball, able to just put it up and get the two points. Ooh, driving to the hole and getting the foul, and the lay-in is Mr. Winbush from Lake Charles, Louisiana. Louisiana, home of the great Britney Spears. <laughs> My personal favorite. <laughs> the pop princess. I was not expecting that. <laughs> so Wimbush does get the three-point play that time. Yes, Britney, I still love you. Hit me, baby, one more time. God. <laughs> oh, it's Paul going to bring the slam the down. The slam -o. Quincy Pope, 70 to 35, yes. Oops, I did it again. The block by Winbush. Yeah, that was a that was a wild moment right there. Winbush saying, get that stuff out of here. Robbie D liking it from the sideline. And that is his third block of the game. They have been big. He definitely gives them an inside presence to the defensive end. Long, got those long arms. And just able to block shots, great timing. Like to see him be more assertive on the block though on the inside. Foul goes to Viega. Looks like it's his third. The BCC has effectively doubled UCAP's score. Well, not anymore. <clears throat> Corey Green driving baseline. A little around the world action. Nice wind bush with the lay in. Martinez driving right to the hole. Seems like Martinez like their whole offense right now. He's the only one who's willing to drive right now. Some substitution. We got Khan Hoban coming in for Marcus Mitchell and Vieira. Out there, we got Quincy Pope. We got Joshua Winbush, Corey Green, and Damian. I'm sorry, and Stephen Torres. Starting to learn this team now. 
Wimbush. Running the floor like a gazelle. Three-point shot, Pope. Well, he's got such a pretty shot. Every time he gets up on that rim, it looks like it's going in. Gray Cooper, jumper, short jumper in the corner is good from 12 feet. 72 to 39, 14 minutes to play. Corey Green holding on to it. BCC being patient. Oh, Winbush, short jumper is good. Looks almost too easy, the pass from Pope. Fletcher picks up his dribble. BCC just forces you to pick up your dribble. They force you to get deep into that shot clock. They make you earn that shot. Oh, he caught him in the mid. <laughs> Martinez almost lost his foot and keeps his pivot foot. No good. Offensive rebound and a new shot clock for UCAP. Look out. JC Hamlin. Hamlin driving to his right, being guarded closely by Pope. And they're going to call travel. And he's down clutching his knees, it looks like. And that's not good. You never like to see that. Luckily, nope. he's going to. Might be an ankle, actually. Man. And he, I think he's going to take. We've seen enough leg injuries as of late in the NFL and the NBA. Anytime a player goes and grasps his knee, you don't like to see that. Nope. That's for sure. I've seen so many ACL tears. Bad ACL, ACL tears, too. Like that Zach Miller injury, that was horrific. Guy almost had to have his uh, leg amputated. He had some uh, trauma to the arteries, and never a good thing. Nope, never something you want to see. Wimbush taking a strong to the hole. Nope, they call steps on him. BCC still with the pressing defense. And that's what I like to see. Never let up. Don't let this team up off the canvas. And that's the thing, that's, those are, um, those are things that we've seen from, from some past BCC teams where they let teams hang around or get back in and sometimes beat them because they lifted them off the canvas and gave them some hope and didn't put the foot on the throat. And today, I don't think we're gonna see that. BCC has been coming out pressing, playing man-to-man -man defense all over the court from, from jump, fierce. Jumper, no good. Rebounded by, that's uh, Caleb Provitt. This team is constantly driving and dishing, driving and dishing, swinging the ball. Corey Green for three, no good. Loose ball is put in by Winbush. Winbush quietly putting in some points now. How many points for Joshua Winbush? Josh Wimbush, has, he is now leading the team with 17 rebounds. Then we also got Quincy Pope and uh, Corey Green not too far behind him with 16 points and 14 points respectively. How many points for Wimbush? Wimbush has 17. Oh, I thought you said rebounds. No, but he is he has eight rebounds, so he's getting close to a double-double. Three-pointer, -double. Torres! Steven Torres for three. Leaving the hand up there at an insult to injury. BCC must have about five, five or six guys that are in double figures. We'll check the stats there in a second. Cooper is way too strong. Loose ball. Oh, uh, Provitz looking to do something. Corey Green in the lane. Loses that. <laughs> nice try there by uh, Stephen Fletcher to try to throw it off a of Bayhawk, but it didn't, didn't work out in his favor. They'll get it downside to Winbush. Winbush coming in, he's gonna jam it. Drop step jam. And that's something that we haven't seen. BCC looking like men amongst boys here in this one. <laughs> oh man. Now Winbush. New York isn't that far away. <laughs> Wimbush really taking advantage of his height, really just slamming the hammer down on him. Yeah. The Bayhawks defense definitely on point. 
They've doubled that. They've doubled that of their of their opponent, 81 to 39. I need some water. <laughs> We'll keep it here on the court. You're watching BCC basketball, Bayhawks basketball here on FR Media. And if you're looking forward to more of these games on your dial right now, this has been a doubleheader between the men, the men and the women's Bayhawks team going against the University of Connecticut at Avery Point. On Saturday, the BCC women's basketball team will take on Springfield Technical Community College, and so won't the Bayhawks, I mean the men's Bayhawks team. 1 o'clock and 3 o'clock, respectively. Those games will be on FR Media, so check your local listings. Bayhawks well on their way to 2-0, and 2-0 and in Region 21. And, be, and um, Bunker Hill, Bunker Hill is going to be one of the teams they're going to need to beat Craig to get out of Region 21 to advance to the national tournament, something they've never done. And Bunker Hill is the 11th team, not in Region 21, not, not around just these parts, not in the east, but they're number 11 in the whole country. Bunker Hill is expected to do, to do well and go far, and that's been, that's been one of BCC's rivals the last few seasons, Bunker Hill out of Boston. That's who BCC is going to have to beat yep, if they want to go ahead and reach their goal. Yep, definitely going to be an exciting game once we get to that point of the season. Uh, definitely is going to be. Again, you're watching the season opener here at Bishop Conley High School, home of the Bishop Conley High School Cougars, home of your Bayhawks, La France Gymnasium, as they call it. Why don't we Google that? Why don't you uh, let's see where the origin of La France Gymnasium comes? <laughs> Who is Mr. La France? That's the quiz question here on your Bayhawks broadcasting network. <laughs> Oh, oh, nice pass inside. Oh, but he couldn't. Coban couldn't connect there. Nice pass. Nice look by Steven Torres. Gray Cooper for three. Air ball. Didn't even hit the air. Down the other end. BCC constantly looking to pass. You got to love this. Great vision. Drive it to the hole. Plavit. Provit. And Provit will go to the line. We've seen so many combinations, so many different players come in here, Craig. Only the only people that I don't recall seeing is Malik Muhammad Hester, who's a small forward slash power forward out of Shea High School, and Alexander Holloway. In the meantime, Viega banks one in for two. Yes, he does. BCC has gone at least 10, 10 deep here today. Get in the basketball. Mark Ooh, behind Potter, the, back. the back. Oh, nice pass. Inside. Oh, but getting it blocked by Fierce. Nice effort there by Provit. Caleb Provit. Fierce just overpowered him with a block there. Fierce. Taking it to the hole, off the glass and in. Beers mm -hmm. quietly having a pretty decent game for himself. Now you're talking about Martinez being their whole offense. Fears, who's struggling in the first half, really starting to pick up in the second half. Fears is playing buckets. He's always around the basketball. I mean, he's always got the basketball, taking it to the hole. He's always, he's got, always getting shots. He's one of the main offensive forces. All right, 83 to 41, BCC up by 42. 9 11 left to play. We've seen a couple blowouts. <laughs> and this game's really just been a whole team effort. You see Winbush, he has 19 points. Quincy Pope with 16. Corey Green has 14. Steven Torres almost getting to double figures with nine. And then with the rebounds, again, it's been, we talk about it's good to have height with. Um, with Josh Wimbush, he's got eight rebounds so far on the day. Quincy Pope with four. So really, this has just been a big team effort. And the and the three points, uh, the three point shooting, we really can't get enough with. Crazy amount of three point shooting. Again, shooting still probably over uh, 500 right now. Yeah, it's been stellar. And Craig, this is the most well balanced.
and I'm talking from every position, the most well-balanced, the most deepest team that I've seen any of Rob Dell lose teams. And I've done, the, I've done these games in my fourth season, and um, I see some good BCC teams. But as far as athleticism, as far as three-point shooting, as far as confidence, like confidence in their half-court sets. And I talked to Coach Rob Dell Lou, and he said that they have trouble in the half-court you know, being, being a young team, they have trouble in the half court and, you know, they, a lot of times they're not patient. We've seen patience from this team today. They really worked the ball around the perimeter. They really made the extra pass. They've really been dribbling and driving. Guys cut into the hole. They really haven't taken their first, first look or second look. They've really been working this defense. And there it is. Another put back by Viega. They've been getting second chance opportunities. They really, they really have done a lot. They've shot the ball well. Yeah, foul they goes to Torres. Yeah, BCC has shot the ball well in the half court. They've shot the ball well in transition. They're getting layups. Obviously, their defense is creating turnovers. They've done it. They've done it in a lot of ways, not one dimensional at all. So, this BCC team is exciting. Exciting to, exciting to watch, right? Yep. Yeah, as you said, this is one of the best BCC teams I've ever seen. And it's early yet, and they had a long way to go, but definitely, they definitely do look quick. Hmm. Yep. Definitely, definitely looks like the quickest team yep. that I've seen. Definitely top two I've ever seen. We've only done two seasons. There's the alley oop. Viega got kind of tripped up on it. Yeah, he did. Looks like he got his legs knocked out from under him. It was pass interference. Five yard penalty, first down. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Hands to the face. Can't wait for Sunday night. Yeah, Patriots, Broncos. Yeah, I hate the bye week. <laughs> it's like one of the worst weeks of my life. You know who likes the bye weeks? The Browns fans. <laughs> Working his way down low, Martinez drops the shoulder, gets it. Nice little up fake. Didn't get it to go though, and he's frustrated. And it's been that type of night because the Bayhawks they frustrate you. Great performance. Again, a real big team effort. Really looking forward to the rest of the season. Shot, shot clock. Down. They'll get it inside. You're going to have to get it away. Viega, fall away, jumper. No good. And that might be one of the first times we've actually seen the shot clock go down a good yeah. amount for the for the Bayhawks. Oh, wow. Did Fierce just drop that in? I think he did. That was a weird shot. Uh, one for the bounce pass, but Coben wasn't looking. Basketball. Martin from Louisiana gets it down into Viega. And he, you know what? Every, every player that scores, I'm like, wow, they're scoring a lot of points. Viega. Viega, how many points does Viega have? Because he's been he's been underrated here today. He's got he's been putting in some buckets. Viega's got 12 so far in the day. Seems like he's got more than that. But I know everybody's got double figures. Martinez with another reverse lay-in. They're giving him that all day. Yeah, well, UCAP has really two prominent scorers. BCC has like eight right now. <laughs> exactly. It's not a two-man punch. It's a ten-man punch. Martinez with the basketball up to Fierce. It's been Martinez and Fierce. That ball keeps bumbling up and down and finally dropping it in. Number 12, J.C. Hamlin. BCC will slow it up. They have a 40-point lead. Not much more to prove. Espinol 
Espinal looking to check in. And he's going to come in for, for Viega. Zachary Vega. Vega. I'm going to go with Zachary Vega. It's, e, it's the E's before the I. Hakan. Hakan definitely getting some looks around the basket. Just hasn't had a lot to fall. You can definitely see that he's got some game, though. It's a long way from Turkey, and it's a long season, so he'll definitely improve throughout the year. Yeah, definitely. You definitely can see the skill set. Driving to the hole aggressively, taking it hard. Number 12, J.C. Hamlin. Green right out the gates. Nice crowd here for the Bayhawks home opener. Good to see. Green taking it into the teeth of the defense. Puts it up. Can't get it to drop. Nice bounce pass. Nice skip pass down to Martinez from Hamlin. Too nice hook up there. Could be too little too late, but in these last couple of uh, possessions, UCAP been playing pretty well. I think it is a little bit too late. And Hamlin with a steal. Carroll's by Mitchell. Mitchell in a turnover. He's going to hear it from Rob Delalou. He's, he's turned the ball over a few times. And who else but Fierce following the shot and putting it in for two. Mitchell had a couple, couple three-pointers early on. It's been kind of quiet since. There he is, pulling up for three. I was going to say he had a chance to shut me up. Taking it the other way, Martinez. Does he seem like he always has the basketball at the end? Yeah, it's either him or Fierce. They've been the two guys to have the ball most of this game. Something I want to point out, Tyrell Martinez has his jersey untucked. Are you allowed to do that? Um, not on purpose. It's been like that throughout like the whole game. Well, that's because the pointer is UCAP is coming undone, Craig. Hmm. So it's almost like apropos that it sure it is undone. Fall away three-pointer by Green at the shot clock buzzer, but it doesn't even hit the rim. It's going to be UCAP basketball, BCC with a timeout. Timeout on the floor here, 87-55, to 55, BCC with a huge lead late with 3.49 left to play here at Bishop Conley High School in Fall River. FR Media, Bayhawks basketball. It's halves in this, so if we're in the second half. The second half, okay. So there's no periods? Second half, there's no periods, there's only two halves. So periods. In girls in high school and professional, but in college it's two halves. Okay, back here back here in the action, Dave Cardoza gonna be joining us back after getting a very small cup of water. Guessing that's all they would give to him. You know, it's going to enemy territory asking for water. You enjoy your water, Dave? Yeah, my little Dixie cup. Espinol crossing over from the free throw line. Jumper, no good. Long pass to Fierce. Nice. 
Patriots could use you. Nice hook up there. Yeah, J.C. Hamlin looking like a quarterback. Yeah, Hamlin playing well. and He, he was playing well at the beginning of the game, hit some key outside shots, and then he disappeared for about half of it with the middle of it, and now he's back here at the end of it, but it's too late. In the corner, Malcolm Mitchell, Marcus Mitchell. I don't think I got it right yet. Yeah, Marcus Mitchell, there you go. Marcus Mitchell with a three. He's close to double figures now. Yeah, he is at nine. Yeah, he's got Very nine. Close. I know he's got three. I know he's got three three pointers. That's been the tail of the tape today is the three point shot. Martinez had the reach in there. He had part of that had to do with that steal. Melt Mitchell to the lane. And he gets fouled. And there's a the double figure. It's another one. Another Bayhawks player in double figures. I'm looking, I'm looking forward to Barrett's alehouse. You have five players in double figures. Juan Espinal coming out, Steven Torres coming in. He's Guys going in and out on the fly. It's like watching a hockey game. It's like line changes. Well, that's what happens when you have so many capable guys. I know, right? That's a long season though, Craig, and you gotta keep your eyes on the prize and you gotta keep your you gotta keep your focus on today and not tomorrow. Mitchell with the steal, gets it out to the wing. Green about to bury it. And he comes up short, but the pointers are already buried. 93 to 57. BCC with a chance to hit the hit the century mark. 224 left to play in this one. This one's about academic. I tell you, Marcus Mitchell all over the place. Yes, he is. But he's definitely, oh, coming out of nowhere, Martin. Looking like the honey badger. He does get blocked on the play, though. So Fierce coming in with the block after the steal. Honey Badger out of LSU. LSU, Tyron Matthew. What happened to the Honey Badger? Is he still in Arizona? Seattle playing uh, the Cardinals tonight. Hmm. No, I know the Cardinals, are the Cardinals are ready to win the Super Bowl five years ago. Guys yeah. like Larry Fitzgerald, Adrian Peterson now. Oh, yeah. Kurt Warner. <laughs> Kurt Warner. And we see this team right here now, Craig. But you know what? This team is – this is only the second game of the season. So right. imagine how much better this team could be. Imagine how much better different players are going to be, different combinations. We're only seeing the, uh, the surface of what this team can be. Guys are going to improve. This team is going to mesh. It's definitely crazy. This looks like a team that's been playing together for a while. They do, but still, this is this team is right now here in early November is going to be much different come late January, come February, come tournament time when we really make our money. Yeah, right now you can see Coach Delu really just kind of playing around with the pieces, seeing what fits with what. Yeah. They've been practicing since October 1st. So they've definitely gotten the practice time in. Coach Rob Delu says they... They practice six to seven times a week. And these guys are constantly hanging around the school. They're always in uh, Coach Rob Dale Lou's office. So, I mean, they're eating, sleeping, and drinking, you know, the BCC Kool-Aid <laughs> and basketball. Driving to the hole is Caban. Ninety six. Thank to 59. God they got guys that are six foot seven. I didn't even realize Zachary Vega. This guy's six four. They yep. didn't have this last year. Nope. Had a lot of guys that were six two, six three, maybe. They had a lot of five ten guys. A lot of five ten guys. They had like Armani Baker who's like six one, but he plays big. Look at this. It's just like that. Mitchell getting some points in garbage time. He's got thirteen now. And Mitchell, who didn't have his best game, he looks like he's going to be one of their better players, too. And he kind of disappeared. Coach Rob Del Lue took him out of the game. He had some turnovers. No, but he's looking like a leader on this team. Yeah, I think definitely. He's made, definitely, look at, look at Coban going to the, to the hole. Now, Mitchell has five assists on the game right now. He's leading the team in assists. That's what I mean. He's doing some little, yeah, he's getting, he's getting the assists. 
Yep, he's making the team better, making the other players better. Yeah, he's, you could tell he, you could tell he has a presence, and obviously he's a great, he's a good three-point shooter. Yep, the clock's winding down. Will BCC get to the century mark? It's a little something <laughs> else to play to for. To. Mitchell being aggressive, taking it to the hole. Look at that take. He's like, I want to get my 15, 16 points. He's got, he must get like 15 now. Ever since I said he was uh, near near double figures, he surpassed that by a lot now. Yep. King of the last five minutes to say Marcus Mitchell so far. He's been dominant. Definitely has. And the good thing about being this deep, obviously, is if Quincy Pope isn't, if he's not, if he's not hitting, Quincy Pope, one of the, one of the captains, by the way, mm. on this side. But him and him and Luis Rosario. We almost forget about Luis Rosario Rivera, who was a key member on last year's Bayhawks team, who was number two in Region 21 last year during the regular season. And, that, and that's a great story in itself. Luis Rosario Rivera, he's a Puerto Rican native. And I know we, we know all the things that happened in Puerto Rico, and our heart goes out to his, his family. And, and uh, yeah, that's it. BCC is a winner. So again, so BCC, it's a deep, so BCC, they have a deep team. What a win. They do get to the century mark, Craig, 100 to 59. And BCC walks out of here, a winner. They are 2-0 now to start the season. And they have another game on Saturday. So I hope you join us then. And let's just see who, who our top scorers are and who's going to be our Bayhawks player of the game. Well, to just say how like diverse this team really was, no one on this team scored above 20, but they were able to reach the century mark. That's how deep this team is, everyone able to score. Now, in terms of who the player of the game is, I'm going to give it to Josh Winbush. He had 19 points along with eight rebounds in this game, so I think he is well-deserving of the player of the game. And I think he definitely affected, he definitely affected the, um, the pointers, their offensive game, because they weren't they were kind of, you know, they didn't want to go inside. And then when they did go inside, Winbush was definitely, if he wasn't blocking shots, he was altering shots. Just his presence in there. And I think his, he, you're only scratching the surface of what he can do right now. Six foot six, six foot seven freshman. You know, he's going he's gonna to have a lot of big games for the Bayhawks. He quietly, score, he quietly to me, scores 19 points. So when, when, you know, when Quincy Pope isn't hitting or when, you know, you know, whoever. So other guys are going to step up. You've seen Corey Green four or five threes today. All these guys contributing for the Bayhawks. You've seen Marcus Mitchell and what he can do. You know, Espinel, second year returning player. You know, he was hitting at the beginning, and then all of a sudden he wasn't hitting. It doesn't matter. They, they, they can hit you with so many different punches. You know, so it looks to be an exciting year, and uh, we look forward to all of you joining us for more Bayhawks basketball on FBAR Media. So, um, the score here, BCC 159 over the University of Connecticut at Avery Point uh, Pointers here at Bishop Connolly High School. So for David Cardoza, that's myself, and uh, the Portuguese Cowboy and Lucy Cabral, you've been watching Bayhawks basketball. Bristol Community College Bayhawks versus University of Connecticut at Avery Point.